This is problem number 8 from section 5.5. They ask us to solve the following initial value problem. They give us the second derivative is equal to negative 4 sine 2t minus pi over 2. And then they tell us two pieces of information that are very key. Uh, they tell us the uh, first derivative with an input of 0 is 300. And they tell us that the uh, original function with an input of 0 is 0. We're going to be able to use these initial values to find the first function. That's what they're really looking for here, is they want us to find what is uh, the original function s. Well, I've got to go through a process here. I've got to integrate this to get the first derivative. Then I need to integrate the first derivative to get the original function. So I have to do two, two integrations here. So we're going to start out by integrating uh, this function first. and when I integrate, I end up with ds over dt. So that's how I'm going to start this. ds over dt equals the integral of d of the second derivative d squared s over d uh, d squared t. So I'm doing the uh, second derivative, integral of the second derivative. That equals the integral of the function, which is negative 4 sine 2t minus pi over 2. And I've got to use a u substitution here. So you're going to see me use this u substitution twice, actually, the same u substitution. So I'm going to do a u substitution on 2t minus pi over 2. Uh, I should make sure I write dt here with respect to t. We're doing the integral with respect to t. So, I start with saying u equals 2t minus pi over 2. So, du over dt equals 2. I multiply by dt, I get du equals 2 dt. And I divide by 2 and I get du over 2 equals dt. So I'm going to use this du over 2 twice, once in my first integral, and you'll see it in the second integral as well. So let's go ahead and substitute this stuff in. That's going to equal the integral of a negative 4 sine u, and then replacing dt with du over 2. So du over 2. Now you can see here the 2 and the negative 4 are going to become negative 2, so I can write that as negative 2. I'm going to write it outside the integral, and then I'm going to say that this is negative 2 sine u du. Now I've got to do the integration here of sine u. I know that sine u, if we look at our derivatives here, uh, let's see. I know that cosine, its derivative is negative sine. So the antiderivative of negative sine is cosine. Well, I could just say that, what if, what if I had a si just sine here? Well, if I divide by a negative, the antiderivative of sine would be negative cosine. So this is going to give me negative 2, parentheses, negative cosine u plus c. And I'm going to call this c1 just because we're doing the, integra the integration twice. So that's c1. And then that's going to give 2 cosine u plus c1. Remember, if you take a constant times another constant, you just get a constant. And so that's going to give 2 cosine u plus, plus c1. Oop, I should have plugged that in. Whoops, sorry. So I'm going to plug in u here. Kind of a wasted step there. 2 cosine, plug back in my u, which is 2t minus pi over 2 plus c1. Okay, so that means that my d 
S over DT equals 2 cosine 2T two minus pi over 2 plus C1. Now with this initial value problem, we can actually figure out what C1 is because they tell us that uh, S prime of 0 is 300. So they tell us that with an input of 0 for T, I end up with 300 for DS over DT. So I'm going to go ahead and input that in there. That would be 300 equals 2 cosine of 2 input 0 minus pi over 2 uh, plus C1. So 0, I get here 2 times 0 is 0, minus the pi over 2, that's going to give me 300 equals 2 cosine negative pi over 2 plus C1. Well, I know cosine of negative pi over 2, that's 0. So that cancels out. So my C1 ends up being 300. Okay, so I can rewrite this then as ds over dt of, or ds over t, dt equals 2 cosine 2t minus pi over 2 plus 300. So that's the first part of my initial value problem is finding the derivative with respect to s. So let's go ahead, I'm going to use another sheet of paper here. And I'm going to copy down this u part. So we're going to use, uh, I'm going to kind of skip the middle step so we know u equals 2t minus pi over 2 and that that ends up giving us du over 2 equals dt. So I'm just transferring this over. And then I'm also going to transfer over my uh, ds over dt. So I'm going to say that this uh, ds over dt equals 2 cosine 2t minus pi over 2 plus 300. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to now do, I have to find S, so I have to do the integral of ds over dt. So S is going to equal the integral of ds over dt, which is equal to the integral of 2 cosine 2t minus pi over 2 plus 300. All right, now we just did the integral for the last one. This should actually go pretty smoothly here. So I'm gonna plug in my u, right, for here, and then my, remember this is with respect to t, all of this with respect to t. So I'm gonna plug in du over two as well. So that's gonna give me uh, integral two cosine u plus 300 and that would be du over 2 when I plug in the dt. Now I can distribute the du over 2, right? So, or at least the over 2 part. That would make that 150 and that cancels that 2 out. So I get cosine, so integral, cosine u plus 150 du. So I just distribute that half to each of those. Now I'm actually going to do the integral. So the integral of cosine u. Well if we come back to our derivatives, you can see the derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So I'm going to get sine u there. Sine u uh, plus 150, and because we're doing with respect to u, this is 150u. And then I'm going to get another, so I'm going to say this time plus a constant, right? But I have, I'm going to name this one 2 because the first time I did the derivative, I named it 1. So we're just saying that they're different constants. 
let's go ahead and plug in what we know. We know that u is 2t minus pi over 2. So we can say sine of 2t minus pi over 2 plus 150 2t minus pi over 2 uh, plus c2. Oop, I kind of got off the page there. Okay, so this is what s equals. So s equals this whole thing right here. So sine of 2t minus pi over 2 plus, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this. So that's going to be 300t. And then when I distribute the 150 there, that ends up being minus 75 pi plus C2. Now remember our initial value, they say for the original function, input of zero, you get zero. So S is zero when you have an input for T, which is zero. So we can find out what C2 is, which is our, which is our goal here, because we want an actual equation for our original function S. So we're going to say zero equals sine 2 times 0 minus pi over 2 plus 300 times 0 minus 75 pi plus c2. Okay, so 2 times 0, 0. Uh, we end up with a sine of negative pi over 2 then. I know sine of negative pi over 2, that's in the bottom, that's negative 1. So 0 equals negative 1, that's 0, minus 75 pi plus C2. Add these both over, and you end up with, uh, let's see, 1 plus 75T equals C2, when you add those over. So C2 is 1 plus oh, 75 pi, not T, 75 pi. So C2 equals 1 plus 75 pi. Let's plug that back in our equation. So we're going to say that S equals, come back to this equation here, and we're going to say sine of 2T minus pi over 2 plus 300t minus 75 pi. And then C2 now we know is uh, 1 plus 75 pi. So plus 1 plus 75 pi. The 75 pi's cancel and you're left just with the function s equals sine 2t minus pi over 2 plus 300t plus 1. And that's our original function s. That's what we we're going for there. Is we wanted to find what the original, uh, find what the initial function was. That's why they say solve, solve the following initial value problem. They want to know what the initial function was for the problem. That's what we found. Using the information we had, which was s prime equals 300, S prime of 0 equals 300 and S of 0 equals 0.